Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your boy, Mongo Slate. So we're going to talk today about the Charlotte Flair, Ric Flair storyline from Raw on January the 25th, 2021. And this was a the first, oh my God, this Charlotte stuff was a clusterfuck at the beginning. It was absolutely abysmal. Um, you started the show with the first ever match between Shayna Baszler and Charlotte. And of course, before the match, we get a pre-match promo from Charlotte where she talks about um, Shayna's crown being invisible as the Queen of Spades, which I'm surprised to keep it around because the Queen of Spades, I believe, is a porno thing. Spades is uh, women who have sex with black men. Or I think that's the Queen of Spades and, and common in parlance, but they keeping that up with Shayna Baszler, which is okay, whatever. But uh, Charlotte talks about she's good at pressure and um, she's nobody's better in high pressure situations than her. She wasn't really distracted by Lacey Evans and Ric Flair and says that, you know, this is the darkest point she's ever seen Ric Flair in. You know, she's seen him in some dark places, but this is the darkest. And that the weight of the name Flair is not the same as just having the name Flair. And she carries the weight. Um, this is very strange because Ric Flair is an alcoholic. So certainly not the lowest point she's ever seen him in. Of course, this is a storyline. Um, later she would talk about how Ric Flair spent all his money, but, uh, okay. So we get this match and 30 seconds, not probably not even that much into Charlotte Flair versus Shayna Baszler. Nia Jax comes in, legs drops Charlotte and the match is disqualified. Stupid. Okay. Um, then, uh, Shayna and Charlotte, um, Shayna and Nia Jax beat up Charlotte here comes Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose, which was good. I was happy to see somebody doing a save. And then Lacey Evans came out to give the, to even it up. They were three on three. So, you know, classic WWE quote unquote impromptu match. So it was Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose and Charlotte Flair versus Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans and Nia Jax. And the match went on and then Shayna Baszler got counted out and it looked very confusing. Like everybody was like, Oh, uh, what happened here? So the first of the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of Raw, probably the first 30 minutes, you had a count out in the first, a disqualification in the first match, a count out in the second, even though technically this second match is an offshoot of the first match. So then it goes to commercial. And when we come back, Adam Pierce is being appealed. The heels are appealing to Adam Pierce that the match needs to be restarted because it wasn't fair. So then he asks the baby face, the baby face says, yeah, sure, start the match. They start the match again, right? So we got the same match twice, back to back, the same six people. And uh, Charlotte is uh, chases off Lacey Evans. And um, as Lacey Evans was, you know, fucking around outside the ring. And Nia Jax ended up pinning Dana Brooke. This was all just one big schmoz. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of everybody's time, dog. I'm not even going to hold you up. This was some bullshit. Straight up. This was trash. All of this was trash. You know, see, WWE kills me with this impromptu shit. Like, they're trying to impromptu matches. Just build a fucking card and put out the show that you wrote. You know, like, this looks chaotic. It looks very unprofessional. It's stupid as fuck. You can't even do this on video games. You can't even get on a video game and do some un just absolutely ridiculous shit like this. It's so unprofessional. This is the most unprofessional shit that WWE does is these quote unquote impromptu matches where two guys get into a fight and then two more guys come out and it's all of a sudden it's a tag team match. But then other times you've got to have contracts like that's, that's some bullshit. Just do the fuck. Just say it's going to be a six person tag team match and just do the fucking match. Why does it got to be so much bullshit? You know, just put the fucking match on the screen and people look, people are going to watch raw whether you announce one match or all of the matches. Just put the fucking shit on the show. Let people know what the hell they're going to watch. Instead, you just just throwing shit at the wall. Like it's like monkey shit. Like you windmilling monkey shit at the wall at this point. This is absolute bullshit. And all of these women deserve better than to be sitting around here looking fucking stupid. And look, the referee probably counted Shayna Baszler out for a shoot. Shayna probably didn't pay attention. She wasn't listening. Who knows? They were doing a spot outside the ring, which is stupid because, yes, the referee is counting. This is not AEW. All of these people should be professionals because, says yes, some of this is the, the fault of the promotion. Some of it is the fault of the, uh, of the wrestlers. 
the promotion shouldn't put them in a fucking impromptu match. That's stupid. Okay. Second, the, the, the referees is calling it for a shoot because they've been empowered by the office. Call it for a shoot. If they really get counted out, they get counted out. And the wrestlers have to be paying attention because that's, they, they have to know that that's the case. So this is ridiculous. You made everybody in this match look stupid as fuck because they got counted out. And then you made us feel stupid for sitting here watching this um, this not well put together bullshit. So, anyway, uh, Nia Jax uh, destroyed uh, Dana Brooke with a really dope, uh, it's like a power bomb into a choke slam. And then she followed it up with a leg drop. So she just double hates Dana Brooke, which is really strange. But uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax will wrestle Charlotte and Asuka at the Royal Rumble for the Raw Tag Team Championships. At least, I, at least I, that's, that's what it was when I checked, I believe. Yes. Hold on, let me check that. So, yeah, it is Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Asuka and Charlotte Flair at the Royal Rumble. I will give my prediction for that match after I do the rest of this stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, I might as well do it now. I just think Asuka and Charlotte are going to win. Asuka and Charlotte are clearly just going to win this match. There's no reason to put the belts back on Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. There's just really no reason for it. So that was the first, the beginning or the end of their initial segment. Later on, we get uh, uh, Ric Flair and Lacey Evans. They're in the back and Ric Flair is, you know, showing Lacey Evans some tricks. Now he's basically just behind her, got his arms around her. And I think that uh, she's trying to teach Lacey some, some, you know, some technique. You know, uh, it was a less racy version of the Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, uh, Trish Stratus stuff. You know, so it was, you know, the PG version of that where Rick is just behind Lacey and he's got his arms around her and, you know, she's dressed conservatively. She's dressed, I think, in her gear. So it's not a big deal. Charlotte comes in the ring. Charlotte comes in the room, sees Lacey with Rick, and Rick is behind Lacey and Lacey is looking like, uh oh. And then Charlotte just says, get out of here to Lacey Evans. And Lacey just, you know, skedaddles because why not? And then Ric Flair and Charlotte have their stare down. And Rick is like, okay, if I, if I can teach somebody and they want to learn from my, from my years of wisdom, I'm going to do it. And I don't want to stay home. And Charlotte just is basically like, you know, that she, she it's not like it's not right. She's seen Rick spend his money on everyone but his family and that he's going from legend to old man and that, you know, from legend to old man. He is an old man and said that she's not the bad guy in this, that she's not the bad guy. She's, you know, she's disappointed in Rick. She's seen him do this type of stuff before, you know, basically saying that he's selfish and, you know, splurges on other people. You know, Rick Flair is known to wine and dine you know he, he does his thing and then rick is kind of disappointed and he's kind of upset charlotte turns around and gets decked by lacey evans and knocked on her ass and then lacey of course cackles like a witch and she strolls off with nate who is wooing and strutting and everything and everybody's doing well so i thoroughly enjoy this lacey evans rick flair and charlotte stuff i'm not charlotte has two feuds going at once you know, she's essentially fighting Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler by herself. And then she's also dealing with uh, Lacey Evans. Um, I'm not a fan of the whole her tag team. The tag team storyline is basically just her. You know, um, that's just it just makes Oscar look like shit. And it's not like they care about Oscar anymore. But uh, they basically made Oscar look like shit. She didn't come out and help her own partner. It took for two randos to come out and help her. I mean, it's look, at least somebody saved somebody. Um, but it, it seems to me like I don't know what they're doing with Charlotte. Charlotte says some very mean shit to Rick, you know, and I get that sometimes people say hurtful things and they don't really mean it in a heelish way. But that was some hurtful shit, she said. And, and to be quite honest, there isn't much you can do that would not turn Charlotte heel at this point because. People already don't like her. So when we see that she's being mean to her dad, even though Rick is being a, a bit of a douche, we kind of, we get sympathy for it because we know Rick can't go anymore. 
you know, and we see how Rick is, you know, trying to hold on. And yes, in this situation, Rick is the heel. I believe that Rick is the heel. He he's he's selling his daughter out for a piece of ass, but he's also being a legend and teaching this young girl a thing or two. Since Charlotte doesn't want to learn from him anymore, she feels like she's beyond that. He's moving on to someone else. And it was similar in the similar case to where, you know, he was teaching Triple H. Triple H became the world champion. Then Triple H had brought these two other guys, Batista and Randy Orton. And so Flair was sharing with them too. Except in this instance, you had Flair who was being rejected by Charlotte. She was saying, I don't want you here. And he's like, well, look, somebody else does. And I like that they're mixing the sexuality with, with also just basic, uh, you know, old man mentorship story. You know, because it seems like from Rick's perspective, he's being a mentor from, you know, to some degree. And from Lacey Evans, she's being she's being flirty. You know, she's, you know, having she's rubbing up against him and posting uh, thirst traps on Twitter and stuff like that. So it's all meant to aggravate Charlotte. But, you know, I get we understand that Rick is supposed to be the heel here. But Charlotte is the one getting a lot of heat because she is not being a baby face. And that's really kind of strange. She's supposed to say, look, I don't mind you helping somebody else, but they can't. Why are you helping somebody who is against me? You know, like that should be the the, the, the dividing line. Like if you go mentor Mandy Rose or somebody who's not trying to attack me, stop trying to stop mentoring people who are attacking me. You know, I am your daughter, you know, but Charlotte comes across like a bitch. And so in this instance, you got Ric Flair who is simping for this young girl and you got Charlotte who's being a bitch. There really is no baby face, you know? So that's that's the one thing about it that I don't like is that you seem to have both Rick and Charlotte kind of as heels in this situation. And I want them to fix that. We understand that Lacey Evans is, is a heel. She's doing heelish stuff. She's antagonizing Charlotte on purpose, you know, <laughs> in front of the world. And no, and Flair knows that she's doing it. So it's not like she's doing it on the sly or behind his back or anything. So we need to just establish that Lacey Evans is a heel and that Ric Flair is turning heel and just go with that. And maybe even I would personally go full bullshit with it. I would, I would just go full day in the hot tub together. Fuck, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> They'll probably never do no shit like that, but why not? You know, um, I know it'd probably be gross. It'd probably gross a lot of people out. You know, people are so uncomfortable with this storyline, but, but whatever. Um, Charlotte, as has, you know, this continues the Charlotte Ric Flair on again, off again feud. Um, I love this relationship that they have because on screen where the, sometimes they're the best of friends and everything's turning up roses because Rick is in her corner. Other times they at each other's throats. Um, and it's almost always Charlotte um, just giving Rick orders and, bringing up old stuff like you were never there for me and or you you spent all your money and and all that type of shit and or Rick is selfish and all that type of stuff like she she did this just a few years ago like five years ago she turned on Rick and and sent him home and she, you know so it's not just like she can hide behind it's a pandemic because she's done this before you know so it's an interesting dynamic that they have this relationship where it's very contentious and it feels very real because people do have fallen outs with their parents, you know, and sometimes the stuff is built on reality. So, you know, it feels real that they're not best friends all the time, that they have disagreements, that they get into it with each other, that they have their own motivations, their own agendas. And that Charlotte is trying to get out of Ric Flair's shadow, but she's also trying to, and trying to make her own path. But she's also uh, carrying the torch. Like she's doing both at the same time. And I know it's, it seems kind of confusing, but it's true. You know, Charlotte is going her own way, but at the same time, she's carrying the torch that Ric Flair um, lit, you know, and Rick is still, still has like this little, it's not a torch anymore. Right now it's like a lit match and he's still trying to, you know, pass on what little he can. And that's, it's a, it's a good storyline. I just want them to clearly delineate the baby faces and heels. Clearly make a Charlotte a baby face. Stop making her a bitch. 
You know, she shouldn't be saying bitchy stuff. She should be more protective of this character. Yes, the character is haughty and arrogant and co confrontational. But she also needs to know when to back down and when to say, you know, be straight up and say, like, this hurts me. This bothers me. Don't do this. You know, and it only bothers me because Lacey Evans is directly against me. You know, if you want to mentor somebody that I'm never going to wrestle, that I'm never going to you know, have to get into it with, fine. You don't have to stay at home, but you shouldn't be going against me. And that should be the, the storyline. Put all the heat on Rick, that Rick is making a choice to go against Charlotte. Instead of, you know, you're incentivizing Rick to be a douchebag because Charlotte is a bitch. So sure, I'm going to go against you. You're a bitch. So I don't care. Right? And I would say the same thing. Like, it's one thing to say, hmm, you know, I, I would prefer if my dad stayed at home, but he wants to be active. You know, I can't do anything about that, but I want him to be safe. I want him to go home, whatever. And then Rick for to be smiling and profiling and strutting and cutting and strutting around, acting like, you know, like he's <laughs> like he's a young man all over again. And basically flaunting that his daughter cares about him. And he just doesn't he doesn't care about himself or he doesn't care about all that stuff. Because that would make him sort of an arrogant, selfish heel. But in this instance, you know, Charlotte is giving orders. She's not asking, right? She's commanding that Rick stays home. She's demanding that Rick stays home. She's saying how Rick is a, you know, he's, he's, he's been in some dark situations, that he's been a bad dad and all this type of stuff. And it makes them both seem like, it looks like some shit from, uh, what's that TV show? Me and my girlfriend used to watch it. What the fuck? Uh, intervention where you go into these people's houses and you know, they, they arguing at each other while one of them smokes crack. It's like, that's the kind of stuff that they doing here. <laughs> you know, And it, it does makes it real relatable, but at the same time, it's like, they are just two people you don't like, you know, Lacey Evans has been an enabler, but she's the true heel in this picture because there's no really, you know, the only benefit to Lacey Evans is that she's, you know, fucking with Charlotte and she just thinks that it's fun to fuck with Charlotte. But, you know, it's 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 strange that they haven't clearly delineated that Charlotte is the baby face here and then have her acting like a baby face. But that's it. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Use the hashtag three count commentaries to spread the good word of three count commentaries. Spread the gospel of three count commentaries. Uh, like this video, share this video, and um, I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, yeah, light, jet light, jet light. I know what that's like.